Hello students. I've said this before I know and I will say it many more times again but the writing process will save your bacon and will save your paper and it makes as I said it makes it easier it makes your paper a lot better it saves you a lot of time um, and it formats your brain so you get smarter and you become a better writer if you follow it and so I recommend doing this every time and finally to put it bluntly if you don't follow the writing process you are a fool and I really mean that because you're wasting your time you're not learning anything you're trying to try and take shortcuts and it doesn't work luckily it's a very easy easily fixed um, never too late to start no matter how far you are in your process you can you can do it but today what we'll do is I'm going to walk you through the creation the brainstorming of a final paper of a writing for social change paper research paper and I'll, I'll uh, this is a real brainstorm by the way I haven't thought through this very much and it will highlight some of the main points that you should consider make sure you're considering with your picture so here we go first off first off I want to change my margins first off you have to come up with some kind of topic that you want to focus on so um, I'll do a couple examples probably for you. The first one, let's do let's do kind of an abstract concept. So here's one that I think is important. Excellence. Let's try something about excellence. Now that's super broad, and that's a really you know to a lot of people that's a really interesting topic. Oh yeah, excellent. Let's be excellent, Bill and Ted, right? But let's narrow it way down so it's much easier to handle and easier to write and it actually comes out more interesting. It's hard to tackle a whole big concept like that all the time. So let's find some applications for it. How about excellence in school? So the primary audience for this, actually you could, you could choose, you've got two choices. You could write to students and tell them to do a good job with their studies. And you could also write to teachers, I suppose you could write to administrators too, and tell them, encourage them, show them how to do a good job with, with what they do. So let's start with students. Um, if we're going to tell students to be excellent, then a couple things need to be covered, right? Like, what does it mean? What does it entail? And it could entail starting early on your homework, because when you do the last second, it's not very effective and you don't learn as much and you're stressed out and you learn to hate school and you do a bad job and you get bad grades and you hate school even more and you don't realize it's your fault. So start early. Um, care about your work. Try to see the purpose in it. You know, what are you going to get out of it? How will this improve you? How can this knowledge be applied uh, to life? And you could talk about how habits of excellence, you know, will spill over into your life. Okay, so you can see already that I'm getting away from where I started this outline, right? I made this point, what does it entail? And I said starting early, care, see the purpose. Is that really part of what edu excellence entails? I don't think so. I think we need another, another header here. So this probably goes under how to get motivated about excellence. Okay, see the purpose of it, apply your education to your life, show how habits of excellence will influence you. Okay, um, anything else it entails? Be thorough, think carefully about whatever you're doing get feedback sometimes and then some of the basic skills good spelling in the case of writing 
you know, writing a place applies to a lot of stuff, but um, so let's I'm gonna call this basic skills. Spelling, formatting, handwriting, as if people really used handwriting anymore. And then we could have also specialized skills. And let's, I'm going to narrow this down even further. Let's just talk about it in terms of writing. Um, specialized skills, audience awareness, you know, what does your teacher want from you? Purpose and audience of whatever you're writing, et cetera. There's a lot more. I could go on for a while, but since I'm not really clear on what I want to work on yet. I'm not going to waste a lot more time. How to get motivated, see the purpose, um, just do it. There's a reminder for all you, any of you procrastinators, which is probably most of us in some instances. The reason we procrastinate comes down to that we don't feel like doing something and we want to wait until we feel like it so it'll be more pleasurable. But the fact is that you'll find if you try this that the best way to feel like something is to just get started. So do it. Um, so at this point, do I really like this topic? Do I like this angle? You know, one of the tough things about this topic, telling students to get motivated and be excellent, is that it's hard to make them care about it. You know, it's hard to overcome those inherent barriers. If they are not shooting for excellence for some reason, then they probably don't have the vision that you want to sell them on. And just explaining to them, oh, it will help you throughout life. Doesn't that sound kind of like your grandfather giving you this advice that little kids, you know, you don't appreciate until you're at least into your 20s, typically. So we can do one, we can do a couple things. One is we can find better ways to motivate them. So we can tell some stories and examples. Um, use some metaphors to help them get the point. Or we can change our approach. For example, let's change our audience to teachers. Let's keep the same purpose, encourage students to um, be excellent and value excellence, but let's 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 angle it at people who can influence them. Okay, so we got teachers, we've got parents, role models. I'm sure there are more, but gotta think about this for a minute. See if I can see a way forward that seems like it'll work. Now at this point. I haven't thought it through well enough to decide whether it'll work or not. I have a few ideas. It seems like a really tough sell, but I sh but if you're at this point in your paper and you're like, oh, this isn't working, this sucks, this is this will never work, don't give up so easily. Brainstorm through some more before you make up make up your mind about that. You know, really, any one of these four audiences could work just fine. So let's brainstorm a little bit more and decide which one we want to work with. So if we're working with teachers, then, you know, be encouraging, have high expectations, and you can throw in some good research, like this is like decades old, the Hawthorne and Rosenthal effects. Which basically say that the students will rise or fall to meet their student, their teacher's expectations. So it's expected of them, keep demanding of it, and eventually they'll rise, rise to meet that. Um, 
You could also include all this brainstorm stuff we said about, you know, to the students themselves. Like, you could have, teach the teachers to say these things effectively. Some other facts of life, like that, uh, where do you set your expectations? It's hard to type and talk at the same time. You know, whatever you aim for, you'll hit. Let me set up there. So you might as well set high expectations and hit those. It takes about the same amount of effort. And accomplishment is actually much more rewarding than video games and mere distraction. Now you have to actually give them get a taste of that. To experience it for themselves and before they'll probably believe that but um, maybe start small try it out okay so some more ideas now then who should we have and do that now teachers obviously if they had this information and some good ideas for how to teach it, they could definitely put it to use. They would be interested in it. That would be a great sell. Parents, hopefully they care about it. You know, what can they can do? What can they do? They can really support those teachers because if kids have bad attitudes about education because it's hard or it takes time because they want to be lazy and play their video games or something like that because they don't see the point of it, it's a lot harder for teachers to talk kids into caring about that unless you're a really dynamic teacher than it is for parents to well, I would hope so, to uphold that expectation or that, that attitude. So parents could be a good one and role models. Uh, I think I'd have to think of more specific role models to come up with that. So I've got enough good ideas. I'll, I'll go with one of these. Let's brainstorm a little bit more. Um, before we decide that. So if we we're going to talk to the students, what kind of introduction do we want? Um, actually, before we go there, let's do this. Research question. We want to think of a research question because if we just try and teach what we already think in our heads, we're bound to miss information that we don't know about yet. So in this case, the, re the research question could be how can students be motivated to value success more highly? That's fine. Okay, now let's talk about the approach. So, if we are talking to students, then we've got to do catch their attention before we start preaching to them. So maybe a story or something interesting, some good hook. And then probably the discovery, the structure will work bad, better where we say, we could say, you know, have a story about excellence and say, is it really hard? You know, can you attain it? Is it worth, is it worth it? Um, Why should I be excellent? And then start to answer the question. So that's the discovery structure, right? Start with the question, answer as you go along. Um, because, and give them all those reasons. And then in the conclusion, have a call to action and make a good reasonable small step. Tell them to try it on one assignment. You know, or tell them to try it for one week, or tell them to uh, talk to their friends 
because a lot of people, I think we have this innate love for excellence and for doing good work and talk to people and you can motivate each other and um, kind of commit yourself, right? Okay, so there's an idea for that. that, that that's all right. Now let's try it for parents. If we can talk to parents, one thing they value is their kids. Um, you know, why should they be concerned or something? And for parents, a discovery structure might be too slow and too wishy-washy. I don't know. I guess it could go either way. First off, I would narrow it down more than parents. Obviously, you should narrow down the age of the school children because that completely changes how much parent involvement there is and what kind of discipline and things parents will do with them. Also, you could talk to parents of low-performing kids or medium-performing kids. You know, maybe bright ones that haven't really pushed themselves yet. And that matters a lot because you'll say very different things depending on which group you're talking to. So let's, let's take the intelligent but lack of motivation. Parents of smart. Um, so I can talk about their kids. Not reaching their potential. Maybe you can create a tone of understanding, no blame. And you can point out, you know, it's not it's not the kid's fault in most cases. I mean, we can't, like an adult, you can say, look, do a good job. And I think we can put their responsibility on their shoulders and say, you need to try. But a kid, if you're talking elementary school, for example, they need to be taught that. They need some experiences and some encouragement and everything. So if some kid's underperforming, it's probably, I mean, there are many reasons for it. For example, the media... You know, they just want to play games. They have all these distractions. Maybe the education system itself, too many kids in the classroom. Teachers can't give individual attention. So, especially in those young grades to help get kids figured out how to, how to, re how to deal with education and aim high. So, you know, you could share some of those things. And then I think in this case, rather than discovery structure, I think the support structure could work out much better. Um, make your claim that this paper will help kids improve, right? Just come right out and say it. Say, look, we've got to get your kids motivated and I'm going to tell you six ways how. You know, if you, if you, if you say something like that to parents, they already want your solution. You don't have to ease into it. You don't have to trick them to think it through. So. Um, by the way, on that note, let's go up to discovery structure with the kids. Maybe they don't know, they don't care about excellence yet. So maybe you can say, how can school get easier? Maybe they care about that. And you're going to point out, you're going to slowly lead them along until they get to the point where they realize that if they care more and try harder, that's how school gets easier. Tricky, huh? Good. Okay, support structure. So go ahead and just make your claim, tell the parents, make big promises, set expectations for this paper. They are hungry for it, they're excited, right? Because you need to encourage those parents too because they've got their work cut out for them. And then you just start um, explaining how. Make your points, right? And go back up to, let's change our, let's, you know, I like this one better than directing straight to the students because it's I mean you could do that but but I'm gonna I want to I'm just gonna choose working with parents I'm gonna delete that and let's change our research question now to match how can students so how can parents motivate uh, children to value success and excellence and effort or whatever in academia and school. All right, so we've got a really basic outline here and I'll, I'll skip, we don't need to talk about 
how to talk to teachers. If I decide I don't like writing to parents, then I'll, I'll consider working through about how to deal with how to, but because getting teachers to sell this to kids, I think just parents can be more effective. So, and I want to be effective. I want this paper to make a difference in the world. So, so here I have a really basic outline. Let me think about it for a minute and then we'll start filling it in in more detail. You know, that looks really straightforward to me. I think that can work. So what we need now is a lot more detail. So at this point, well, I can jot down some ideas I may know, but what I really need is to go do my research. I need to um, find some articles that talk about my research question. Uh, so research process, of course, start with your general reference material, Wikipedia and all that to get some of the basics down and get ideas of what kind of specific things to look for. Then go to some education journals or, or whatever, motivation journals, or just go ahead and search all the journals um, from the general reference material, find the right keywords to look for and find out what's going on. Find out what the real answers are, and not, not just ones that feel good, you know, that we assume. That's a good place to start, but make sure you come up with information that actually, actually works and is actually helpful. Put to use the value of all this research that is being done on, on your topic. So some of the main points we've made in this video so far are, you know, come up with a topic you like, brainstorm about it, you know, start brainstorming on the contents of what will go into your paper, figure out your audience, who you want to write to, and pick a specific one, a narrow one, uh, and just pick one audience. Don't write to two audiences. Don't write this to parents and students, because the part that talks to parents, you know, it's just, it's just less effective for everyone. It's like taking some really good lasagna and some really good um, Kool-Aid or juice or something and then mixing them together. You know, let, do it in your stomach, that's okay, but don't do that in your paper. One or the other, one at a time. And, and choose a narrow audience. So parents of smart, unmotivated kids, uh, not narrow enough, let's, let's pick an age range. Elementary school kids. All right, that's pretty narrow because that lets me talk very directly to you know their interests. Also, come up with a good research question and modify it as you go, improve it as you go as you need to, and then go to your research. All right, I hope that helped. Good luck.